I'm gonna make some distress paint backgrounds and I'm just using a variety of colors. This is speckled egg. I like this color a lot called twisted citron, salvage patina, um, peacock feathers. That's another favorite color in the oxide also. And I put a little bit of the mowed lawn uh, I probably, I don't know if I use this or not. This one is Lucky Clover. But as you can see, it's just a combination of some blues and greens. And um, I'm going to wet my Distress watercolor paper. I'm using the smooth side. And I'm just going to kind of dip it. Oh, big blob of that got on there. Didn't mean, oops. I think my um, Twisted Citron is a little bit dry. It's almost at the bottom. I have a new one there. So I think I might need that because it looks like it's kind of blobby. Just water it down a little bit more. Just break up some of that. Let it move around. Then I'll go back in and pick up some more. I'm going to dry it a little bit and then I'll, I'll dip it some more. I like this a uh, little bit of green, but I'm going to water it down some more. It's very thick. And again, it's because it's at the bottom of the bottle. These are the easiest backgrounds to make. You just dip it, spray it a little bit, and then um, dry it. I think that's pretty good. I think I'm just going to break up a couple of these spots and let this dry. Um, the other thing to remember, if this gets on your clothes and it dries, um, it will stain your clothes. So you, I probably should have worn something else, but if you can get it off while it's still wet, it's fine. It's just once it's dry, it's permanent. Okay, I'm going to let that dry a bit and I'll be back. So for a long time, I bit, I was using um, Distress Mixed Media paper, which is a little bit more of this uh, vanilla color. But then I switched to the Distress watercolor paper. For whatever reason, I liked it. It's a little bit thicker, um, but I'm going to try this paper, see how it works, how it compares when I um, use it, as opposed to the... Um, the watercolor paper, so we'll see. I probably should have put fresh paint down because I did use some of this more watered down paint. Um, it has more of a tie dye effect. I'll dip it some more.
kind of like that. So I'm going to leave that, let that dry. This one is the Distress Mix Media Heavy Stock. This one is the Distress Watercolor Paper. And I actually think I like this one better. I'm going to have to try this a few more times to be sure it's not just the way that I applied the paint um, or the thickness of the paint because I know the paint was thicker here. By the time I did this, most of it had been watered down quite a bit and then I just put a few drops of new paint on it. But both are nice and I'm going to use this as a background for my card. Today I'm going to make a card using the Spellbinder Stitching Die of the Month for January 2024, and it is a B. So you receive all these dies, and if you're not familiar with it, Spellbinders make stitching dies, and it cuts out the shape, and then it also cuts out these small perforations that are for the stitching. So you can see on um, Here's one of the wings. You can see on this wing, it has um, the holes for the stitching. And they also um, emboss on here lines. And that's where you are supposed to um, have the thread go. So it should go, I don't think you can see it, but there's a line right here. So you know you come up here and then you go down through here, you end up with a stitch. So this one um, has a small circular area that is for um, a flower shape. You can do an, a simple stitch where you just go from the petal to the center and you'll have a simple stitch. But I watched um, a video by Yana Smakula and she showed how to stitch and um, make these flowers. And so I'll show you one. I'm not going to show you the whole thing because that would take a long time. But um, you come up. I, I mean, you can start anywhere, but I come up through the center. I do it a little bit different than she did um, because she did just a few of these stitches and then she weaved the, um, the petals. So I'm making these stitches for all the petals by just going from the petal to the center. She also used um, six ply thread. I split mine and just used three. It just felt a little bit thick for me. I really don't know how to do any of the fancy stitches. So, oops, it's the back. And I'm just finishing this last petal here, going through the center. So you can do that. And I think when she used six ply thread, you didn't see as much of the holes um, since I'm going to weave it, this is this is what it looks like when it's complete. Since I'm going to weave it, I didn't care that you can see these holes still. But I think if you were just going to do that plain stitch, it would be nice to use a thicker thread. Come up through the center. And then you're weaving under the first petal. And for the next one, you're going to go over it and skip to the one beyond it. Go underneath and don't pull it too tight. And I just keep going around and around till the holes are covered, pretty much. So I'm going to skip this one and go to this one. And I think it's about covered. Maybe one more here. So skip and then go to this one. And then I'm just going to go to the next hole and go down and uh, to the back. So 
If you can see that, that's what it looks like. And I'll show you on my completed card. Um, these are the flowers that I made. And then I just made a French knot in um, a fuchsia color for the center. I thought it added something. Um, the wings, you can see, are just straight stitches. And that's the pattern that you end up with. You also get uh, the flowers. So these flowers, there's two different types. There's a long one, and there's a smaller, smaller one. I use the two smaller ones and joined them together. The Sentiment Hello came from a different set. That was from a Simon Hurley set, and I will link it below if you're interested in, in those dies. But I just wanted a simple sentiment. So you can see that I just cut these two. You get two of them, one going in each direction. And I cut them like that. And then there's another die that cuts the top of the flowers. And I just cut it from white. And then I used Copic markers and I colored those in. And that was pretty much it. Um, I'll show you how to do the wings. I'm not going to show you any more of the flowers. Um, but I, I'll probably come back and just show you the quick French knot that I made for the centers. Next, I'm going to show you how to make a French knot. You go back up through the center of the flower. I made a small knot at the end of my thread. Again, just to keep it kind of in place, but not pulling it too tight. Now, with the up, with a hand that's not holding the needle, you wind the thread around two times. And you try to keep it in place and then go back through the center of the flower. Kind of keeping hold of this thread because you don't want it to go too fast. You'll end up with a knot in the wrong place. You want it at the very end. And as you pull it through, you end up with a French knot. And that's the center of the flower. And then again in the back, I just go and make a quick slip knot to keep it in place. So there you go. Now on this card, I made three of them. I'm not gonna show you how to make three. I'm just gonna stop here um, and just show you what I did to glue the back. So you end up with a little bit of a messy back and you wanna be sure that the thread stays in place. So I just put a bit of glue. Let's pretend that there's another flower here, another flower here. And then I took a separate piece. I just cut the same color and I attached it this way, just matching it up. I felt like it was a little bit more secure that way and gave it a little bit of dimension. And then I just put something on top of it, just whatever you want, just to kind of press that glue into the paper. And that way later, when you're ready to put this all together, you have a smooth back. And um, I think less chance of it really uh, getting smashed and maybe uneven in the mail. And then you can just glue it on. I'm gonna quickly show you how I stitch the wings. Um, if you remember, the wings just have the holes and these pieces, have um, lines embossed into the paper from the die. So I just make a, a knot. I use three ply of the embroidery floss and I'm just coming up, following the line. I knotted it in the back. I'm following the line and then going back just to keep it secure back to the original hole, and then going to the next hole. The line is here, I came up here, I'm gonna go back here. And that's all you do, you just keep connecting, connecting the lines with, your, with long stitches.
and that's it pretty easy I'll finish the rest you'll see it at the end I glued most of the pieces down I did quite a bit more stitching on the um, the body of the bee and now I am going to just adhere the branches I want them to be like this, and then the hello will be in the middle. So, I'll put these down here. Might have to move that a little bit. I layered the white piece twice and then put it on top of the shadow. Okay, that looks pretty good. I have a little bit of Wink of Stella that I'm just going to put on the buds. And that's it. So this one's just a little bit more elaborate than the original. I just decided to add a few more colors, but it's good either way. Um, the only difference is this one I forgot. I had popped up with some um, black fun foam. Kind of like the way it looks just a little bit higher up from the wings. But either way, I think I added so much more stitching here that it probably, it's probably enough. This one is um, glitter card stock that I use in both black glitter and gold glitter. And um, just die cut the pieces. And then this is kind of like a fabric that came from your paper insider in one of the subscription boxes I received. It's um, paper and it could be easily die cut. It's kind of gauzy. Um, and you can't really see the holes, but because it has a pattern of flowers on here. So I thought that looked kind of pretty. I also um, just took the embossing folder and I rubbed some of the um, embossing ink on the folder and then embossed this black paper pressing this embossing ink into the recessed areas. And then after I ran it through the Big Shot, I took some black glitter embossing powder and heat embossed this. So it has a little bit of a shine. I also just put a small happy birthday foiled sentiment that I had. This last card, I didn't stitch at all. I just die cut everything. Um, this is the B. And then I took this set, which was from um, holiday uh, 2022, so over a year ago, and it had some small flowers. But Spellbinders has a lot of these sets that has some small flowers in it. And I'm sure you have some maybe in your stash by another company as well. So I just die cut these and glued them on. And the same with the leaves. Uh, this sentiment came from uh, a small die of the month club last year and I just used it but you can again use any sentiment you want. The paper is uh, from Spellbinders as well. It came with this already embossed. The leaves are already embossed and they act as a resist and then I just took green inks and blended them on here. And then for the wings this time, I had some vellum, printed vellum, and has these white swirls on it. Um, this was just some scrap that I, I've had for this for years in my scrap bin, and I finally thought of using it here. So that was kind of nice to use something old. And it probably came from Joann's or Michael's or something back, you know, when I used to do some scrapbooking. So I've had this for a very long time. Um, then I glued on, I cut these these um, pieces just from white cardstock. And these were the two that came in the, the set this month. There's a long one and then a small one, which I used with a sentiment here. 
And rather than putting the flowers on, I just cut them from white. And I cut the buds from white and still stuck them on even though I didn't color them. I just thought it added some nice dimension. This one's long, so I had to cut it down to fit. This one was a little bit wide in a few sections, but it still basically fit. I had to cut off one of the buds and uh, maybe a leaf, you know, or, or cut it a little bit shorter. But it basically fit on the onto the wing, and I thought that looked really nice. This one's probably my favorite. Um, but as you can see, there are different things you can do with a set. You don't have to stitch if you don't want to stitch. Just use different kinds of paper, vellum, fabric, you know, do more elaborate stitching. But I think it's it's a very nice set. It's versatile. Um, and I know that some people are a little bit wary of the stitching. But I just think it's, it's a good way to jumpstart your creativity. You know, it made me think a little bit outside the box. I had never done the Spellbinder stitching kits, so this was kind of fun to try to think of different ways for this to look. You know, and the bee doesn't have to be yellow and black. You know, here I added fuchsia, but I, I think that this has the same feel. So hopefully uh, you like these cards. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and you can tell me which of the cards that you like best if you want in the comments. Thanks so much for watching.